Welcome back to Don't Just Sit There, Do Something for climate news, science, and easy ways that you can make a difference. Today's episode is on oil, specifically oil from the tar sands of Canada. Well, doesn't that sound like a lovely little vacation spot? Tar sands of Canada. Tar sands oil extraction and use releases even more climate pollution into the air than normal oil, and normal oil is already pretty bad. A surprising fact, Canada currently supplies more oil to the U.S. than any other country. Uh, we gotta get the oil from somewhere. I mean, it may as well be a friendly neighbor, right? As soon as 2100, it's possible that the world's entire supply of recoverable oil won't be enough to meet demand. Oil is not and has never been a sustainable resource. But the bigger problem is that climate change is happening even faster than we're running out of oil. If we recommit to dirty energy by doing things like burning all the oil in the Canadian tar sands, it's very likely that the worst effects of climate change, massive sea level rise, dust bowl-like droughts becoming commonplace, widespread extinction of species, will all actually happen. And then we'll run out of oil anyway. Largely because of tar sands oil, Canada's own estimates show it will fall short of its international agreement to cut climate pollution. However, because of the money to be made, Canada is planning to sell as much of the oil as possible. Which, of course, our climate can't afford. A company called TransCanada is trying to build a pipeline called Keystone XL through the U.S. to ship more of this oil from the Canadian province of Alberta to the Gulf Coast, where it can be refined and exported. But a pipeline like that would probably mean more jobs, right? A study by the Global Labor Institute at Cornell University found that only a few thousand construction jobs would be directly created by the Keystone XL pipeline, and those would only last for about two years. Cheaper gas? Construction of the proposed tar sands pipelines would mean easier exporting of oil out of North America and would actually mean more expensive gas for many places in the country. The best way we have to reduce our pollution before our climate system is broken beyond repair is to switch to energy sources that don't pollute nearly as much, homegrown, renewable, clean energy like wind and solar. For instance, anyone can buy clean energy to power their home, and clean energy is the fastest growing energy sector. You're right. We already live in the future. Meanwhile, tar sands oil extraction uses millions of gallons of water every day and creates extra climate pollution by burning almost enough natural gas each day to supply every home in Florida for a month. It requires cutting down forest, causes unknown amounts of toxic compounds to leak into the surrounding soil and waterways, there's the occasional pipeline spill that we really don't even know how to clean up, and extraction also creates lakes of polluted oily water so big they can be seen from space. What exactly is in this for us? Using fossil fuels causes all kinds of environmental damage, but since the price of that damage isn't built into the cost of doing business, it gets paid by the rest of us in costs of cleanup and climate. Sounds peachy. Can we get that other future instead? The good news is the public outcry has gone a long way towards halting four of the five pipelines that Canadian companies are currently trying to build to export this dirty oil. Construction of a key part of the fifth, the Keystone XL pipeline through the U.S., is currently under environmental review by the U.S. State Department. If you don't want to keep using one of the dirtiest fuels on the planet and in the process destroy our climate, don't just sit there. Do something. Every episode we give you two easy actions to take. One that will make a difference in your own energy use, and another that will push for bigger change. First, you can save up to half the energy your dishwasher uses just by switching it to air dry instead of heat dry. If you only run full loads, too, then you're really using energy responsibly and are going to save yourself some money in the process. Our second action, in partnership with 350.org, is for you to demand that the State Department consider the effect the Keystone XL pipeline will have on the climate when it considers whether the pipeline should be built. So go to 350.org and sign their petition. Again, go to 350.org and take action and air dry full loads in the dishwasher. In other words, don't just sit there. Don't just sit there. Don't just sit there. Do something. And that wraps up this episode. Tune in next time to hear the latest and learn something about climate. As always, you can follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, YouTube, iTunes, or on the web at do somethingaboutclimate.com. So watch again and tell your friends.